this is how I was finally able to enjoy gnocchi by frying them in their traditional browned butter sauce. Excuse me? You're telling me finally you are enjoying gnocchi because they're fried? Are you really Italian, my friend? Hmm? How Italian are you? I think they do taste a little better when you only use yolk. I After a quick rest, we're good to roll this out. Just roll it out into a snake. When the snake gets to- Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you make it the entire dough into a snake? <laughs> you must have learned this from uh, Gordon Ramsay. Speaking of which, I've had this weird idea that orange zest would be good in this. I think we stop watching here. That's it. Today, we are reacting to Adam Ragusea fried gnocchi. This video has over 700,000 views. Fried gnocchi. <laughs> my nonna has half the amount of views. Are you guys kidding me? Go and watch my nonna's gnocchi video. She will blow your mind. Now let's see. I've seen so many other people frying gnocchi and I don't understand why. Let's see why Adam did that and how they will look. This is how I was finally able to enjoy gnocchi by frying them in their traditional browned butter sauce. Excuse me? You're telling me finally you are enjoying gnocchi because they're fried? <laughs> My friend, gnocchi are easy but technical at the same time, okay? The beautiful, fluffy, al dente gnocchi that you make in the sauce, you cook in the pesto, or yes, in butter and sage, they're so good, okay? You don't like it, I understand. But to tell me that you prefer them fried? Hmm. Are you really Italian, my friend? Hmm? How Italian are you? Historically, gnocchi are Italian balls of miscellaneous starch bound into dumplings with egg and or cheese. Did you just say you put cheese in the gnocchi? Okay, I believe you can when you make ricotta gnocchi. Classical gnocchi, you just do potatoes, eggs, flour, okay? Popular among Italian Americans is flour and potato. And even if you do the trick where you roll the dumpling across a fork to make lots of surface area on which sauce can cling, I just think they taste like fluffy nothing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Really? You don't really like gnocchi. My challenge this year is to come to see you and change your mentality. Or maybe, better, you come to see me in Italy and Nonna will make the gnocchi for you. And then you tell me huh, if you like it or not. I've heard so many people who say gnocchi, especially in, in USA, people say gnocchi are no good. Factory gnocchi, disgusting. Shop gnocchi from the shop, disgusting. Uh, gnocchi are not easy to make. You cannot make gnocchi in a mass production because they won't be good. They will be mushy, they will be disgusting. You need to make gnocchi by yourself. You need the right consistency, you need to learn, learn how to make it, and you need to try my nonna, nonna gnocchi. So go and watch my nonna's gnocchi video and you will you would change your mind, Adam. I'd say one large russet type potato for two portions of gnocchi. That's about a one pound or half kilo. Don't be a tired ass, come on. Use a little bit more. You make a gnocchi, make at least four. Did you know that you can actually freeze the gnocchi? Once you make them, you put them in a, on a tray, freeze them. Once they're frozen, you can transfer them in a Ziploc bag. So when you make gnocchi, do not make one potato, come on. It's gonna be more difficult. Use four, five, six potatoes. I think the best way to get potato for gnocchi is to make baked potatoes for dinner the previous night, but throw in an extra potato while you're at it. Just excuse me, excuse me. Um, this is the reason why your gnocchi don't turn out because what's this? I, I know it's modern technique, uh, but come on, boil your potatoes. Bake them until soft and squishy, like an hour. If you don't have a leftover baked potato, you can just throw one in the microwave. It only takes about 10 minutes in there for me. My friend, <laughs> this is why you don't like gnocchi. What are you doing? Oven, microwave. Come on, my friend, don't you show us this. You got 700,000 people watching you. You got two, over 2 million subscribers. What's this? Gnocchi. Don't, don't offend gnocchi. One of the most beautiful creations of Italian cuisine. The flavor is not as good, but at least it's drier than a boiled potato. People you, you just said it. The flavor is not as good. <laughs> so why do you recommend it? How are you doing? What the hell are you doing? People do boil potatoes for gnocchi, but drier potato is easier to mold into dumplings, and the flavor from the baked potato is superior. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Adam, I know you're very good. I know you do lots of great videos. You explain everything so much. But gnocchi is not your strength. 
So yeah, gnocchi is not my strength either. I've got my nonna and my wife, Suzanne, in charge of gnocchi, and I, I can't make gnocchi. I can make good ricotta gnocchi, pumpkin gnocchi, but potato gnocchi, I leave it to them. So I'm not going online to tell you how to do it, okay? But this, completely wrong. Look at the potato, it's dead. This is the baked one. After it's cooled a sec, I just pull the flesh out with my fingers. This allows me to feel around for pieces like that. That's a... I'll teach you something. If you use a potato riser or masha, the way you call it, and you put the potato in there, the skin is not gonna go through. So you can actually press hard, the potato will go out and the skin will stay in there. Try it next time. A ricer is a great tool for mashing this up, but a fork is also fine. Just smoosh it until it's smooth. And then I'm gonna make a little koi pond in the center where I'll put my egg. Just. It's very important to have the right consistency for the egg, okay? So what you just did, okay, it might work, but you really need to use the potato riser because you need, really need to break these potatoes. You need to break it, okay? They need to like mince it, you know? Like, uh, like ground beef, you need to make ground potatoes. It's really, really important. I'm making dinner for two and a whole egg would be too much, too wet. Come on, man, don't say these things. You use the entire egg. When you make fresh pasta, you use the entire egg. When you make gnocchi, you use the entire egg. No waste, no waste in the kitchen. I think they do taste a little better when you only use yolk. I s Say a pinch of salt per portion. With dumplings this big, I think the interior really does need at least a little seasoning, plus some cheese on the inside. This is pecorino, that'll contribute some salt as well. I'll just- I like to put pecorino, very nice. I like it, I like it. It's very, I love pecorino. So you don't need salt, because pecorino, it's very salty, okay? Potato gnocchi, they don't need cheese inside. No, but it's a nice touch. Just break up that yolk and then flour. I think the common approach with flour and yolky is you put in as little as necessary to make this come together into a moldable dough. I started with half a cup and ended up putting in about a full cup. That's like 120 grams. A lot of people emphasize working this as little as possible as soon as you put in the flour. They want to keep their gnocchi soft, minimize gluten development. But I hate fluffy gnocchi. They taste like baby food. Give me. Man, you're making mashy gnocchi. You're not making fluffy. I think you're making mushy gnocchi. That's why you call it baby food. Real gnocchi, they are fluffy, but they're also al dente. So when you put it in your mouth, they are al dente, you feel them, okay? So do not say this ever again. If you go on YouTube and you have oh, so many views, uh, you're not allowed to say what you just said. Or maybe you need to go to Italy and see, honestly, go and see my nonna, go and see someone who is a perfectionist in making gnocchi, and then you can tell me what you're saying. And please cut your nails. Look how long your nails are. Look how long your nails are. Come on, come on, Adam. Plus, for the pan frying method I'm going to show you, you kind of need the gnocchi to be more solid. If they're too soft, they'll break apart in the pan. They'll break apart. They'll become mushy, like baby food. After a quick rest, we're good to roll this out. Just roll it out into a snake. When the snake gets to... Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that you're making the entire dough into a snake? <laughs> you need to cut into slices, pieces. Get a little bit and then you can into a snake. You are making an entire gnocchi dough into a snake? No. It's a no, 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 no. It's a no, no, no. Again, go and watch my nonna doing it. Go and watch my wife and nonna together showing you how to make gnocchi, potato gnocchi from scratch. And you can see how they should be. Come on. Too long, cut it in half and keep rolling. Then the only trick to... They are too long. They are way too long. Cutting these out into little pillows is to kick them away with the knife. Cut and kick, cut and kick. It's a dance craze. The cut sides are... Ex Wait, how big are they? Because you, honestly, you only made two snacks. How big are these gnocchi? The, the, if the gnocchi are too big, they look like ravioli, big like ravioli. Of course, they won't cook as easily, and of course, they won't turn out good. The gnocchi should not be too big. The gnocchi should be small enough that you probably get two, three, or four on the fork, and they should be able to melt in your mouth, but they should also be able to, they need to be al dente. How do I explain this on YouTube? It's not easy. How do I explain this to a video? It's hard. Extremely sticky, and if two dumplings touch, you'll never get them apart. Sounds like a parable. Excuse me, first add some flour, okay? Because I can see they are sticky in the middle. They are sticky in the middle. They are too big, and they are sticky in the middle. You need flour to help you, okay? Because when you cook it, the flour will go away. 
Do not make them sticky. Roll out the other half and repeat. This might not look like enough gnocchi for two people, but this is a very heavy. I don't like the way you cut them. You can use a nice big knife, for example, and just be nicer. Okay, you're cutting this way the, the way you want. Okay, put more flour. Also, the way you made the snake, it looks terrible. Nona will be very angry with you. Just, this is not the right tutorial for gnocchi. This is not, this is not right. No part of me wants to eat more than half of this. Man, are you really tired? Come on, you don't eat. You don't need gnocchi, you don't need enough. You're too skinny. Your nonna won't be proud of you, my friend. Don't say this. I'm gonna do the fork trick to give these pretty little ridges that would actually reduce the amount of browned surface that I could get on each dumpling. I really don't care about the shape of these at all. I just want- Don't worry about the shape. I agree with you. You don't need to worry about the shape. It's about the consistency and the experience in your mouth. I can see it's too sticky. It's way too sticky, my friend. That should not be sticky. Use the flour. Dust some flour to help you. Into a little pot of boiling water, these- It's very little, my friend. Come on, you're making gnocchi and you use such a small pot. Come on, go through all this effort. Are you gonna throw them in there? Use a large pot, please. Use a large pot. These go, I do find I have to plop them in almost one at a time or else they'll stick to each other. Use more flour. Dust flour on top. Just give them a quick stir to make sure they're not sticking to the bottom and then I'll- Another advice is you can put them in the fridge a little bit so they harden a little bit more. Just saying. I'll immediately throw a huge knob of butter into my non-stick pan and turn the- That's not huge. I've seen huge, let me tell you, crazy videos uh, online who put a lot of butter. This is a good amount, bravo. Heat on medium, get it melting, because these only take like two minutes to cook. When they all float, they're cooked enough. It's just sad, look how small the pot is. Look how small, that, they wanna get out. Probably they're not even cooked, they're just telling you, we wanna get out of this, it's too small. We need space, we need space. We're gonna cook them a lot more in the pan. I'll just drain those as dry as possible through the pot lid. Have you ever heard about a colander? Just saying. Brown them in here until we boil out the remaining water anyway. You can do this. By the way, brown butter, the butter should have been cooked. It should have been melted and browned before you put them in. But it's okay, you do whatever you want. And the sage, butter and sage, they go together when you do butter and sage. So the butter and the sage cook together. So the sage cooks and burns with the butter, and gets the flavor, and then you add the pasta in, okay? Do you guys want me to do a video how to make butter and sage um, gnocchi or ravioli or whatever? Let me know. Throw in my sage, totally traditional to do gnocchi in brown butter and sage. I like to tear in whole leaves. It's very traditional, but you do put the sage with the butter and they make love together. It's all about making love. It's all about making love. This fried gnocchi technique. There is gnocco fritto, fried gnocco in Italy, uh, from the region of Emilia Romagna, and that's a fried pizza. Okay, it's a small fried pizza, and then you serve with mortadella or cheese or tomato, and that's called fried gnocco. Do not confuse that, if you see it on the menu, with fried gnocchi, because they're different, okay? Uh, gnocco fritto, it's a pizza. Fried gnocchi, they don't exist. It's only an American thing. Even they fry beautifully crisp in the butter, but sage is very strong. Don't... There's no butter left. <laughs> There's no butter. The, the gnocchi absorb the butter. The sage needs to make love with the butter, so they give the flavor to the pasta that you put in there. What are you doing with the sage? There's no point, Adam. Don't do this unless you're sure you like sage. I love it. I need. You must have learned this from uh, Gordon Ramsay. Anyway, it's putting more. Some more butter in there. Things are looking too dry. Once the sage leaves are crispy, these are done. I might give one a taste just to check for seasoning. I'll talk. It's just sad. It's just sad for this gnocchi. Just a little more salt in there, but once I get this on the plate, I'm. See, you see how you put the salt in there? Just like that, I put the salt. You're not making French fries. <laughs> You're not making French fries. I'm gonna cover it in grated pecorino, which is. They look like potato wedges. And that uh, sage, it's very sad. That sage, that sage is very sad. That sage needs more love. I don't want the dumplings salty enough on their own if they- you, They are already so salty, you put salt in there, you put pecorino in there, you put salt in the pan and you put the pecorino on top. You like salt, I like salt too. So, okay, va bene. Were they'd be too salty. Those sage leaves- <laughs> They are salty. Leaves are not just for garnish. You gotta try eating them whole. They have this delicious, crumpling, crispy pastry texture in the mouth. Now, I'm not saying my gnocchi are objectively better than your Nona's. I'm just- Oh, bravo, meno male.
<laughs> yeah, yeah, say it again, please. Now, I'm not saying my gnocchi are objectively better than your nonas. I'm just, Yay. just saying that we can all enjoy our own dinners more if we give ourselves permission to be honest with ourselves about what we like and deviate from tradition accordingly. I understand. I, I understand. If you don't like something, what do you do about it? But the thing is, you don't know clearly or enjoy real gnocchi. Real gnocchi made the right way. And not every nonna can make gnocchi. Gnocchi is not for every nonna. There are nonna can make it, nonna can make it. I'm honest with you. I'm not a master of gnocchi. I've made gnocchi before. They're okay, but they're not as good as my nonna or my wife, Suzanne, okay? So you do need to spend more time making gnocchi if you really love it, or have someone in your family who's really good at making gnocchi and enjoy it. But if you say to me that it tastes like baby food, if you say to me that the gnocchi you ate are too mushy, are too soft, then there is something wrong. Then you, 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 you haven't tried them yet. You haven't tried the real Italian gnocchi. So I invite you, Adam, and to everyone who's watching, to try the real gnocchi, okay? It doesn't mean you go to an Italian restaurant, wherever you are, and you can ask for gnocchi and they're good. Because sometimes they're not good. So watch my nonna's video. There's three ingredients in there. Potato, uh, flour, and egg. Anyone can make it. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Once you try it, and then you can tell me, oh, Vincenzo was right. Gnocchi are not baby food. Gnocchi are fluffy, but also al dente. Speaking of which, I've had this weird idea that orange zest would be good in this. I mean, this guy now is putting orange, so he's making an, an orange, butter and sage, fried gnocchi. I think we we'll stop watching here. That's it. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I have enough. I need to go and make gnocchi. Suzanne, can you make me gnocchi, please? Come on, let's have it. Do we have some in the freezer? Uh, I think I Mmm. We're gonna get them from the freezer, straight in the boiling water. And do we have nonna sauce here? Always. We brought some nonna sauce from Italy. Mm. Can't wait to have it. Guys, go and watch nonna's video because it was gonna change your life. Clearly. 700,000 of you don't know what gnocchis are because you watch this video. So it's time for you to come to my channel and watch Nonna and Suzanne making gnocchi. Thank you. E ora si mangia Vincenzo's plate.